Hello, Sid Roth here with Mario Morello, and I have to tell you, I've been looking forward to this interview. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm reminded of? Many of you, you're too young to know about this, but uh, uh, Mario, you you know this. Catherine Coleman, oh. years ago, oh, yes. had a radio show, and she said, I know you've been waiting for me. <laughs> it kind of, I've been waiting to find out what exciting things are going on as far as the glory and the move of God's Spirit with Mario. And uh, last time we talked, Mario, you were in Bakersfield, uh, California, and we were able to show some very incredible uh, eyewitness reports because it's video of what was going on there and uh, now you're in Modesta, California. Uh, I, I recall that the Holy Spirit told you something about uh, the glory that would be along, uh, uh, on Route 99 uh, um, uh, all across that. Now I don't know California but I assume it, it circulates through all of California. Well, I, t I tell you, what an honor to be with you, with such a great man of God and such, you know, I always love being on the, with you because you have the best audience in America. I've never seen a better family of people that love the move of God like whenever I've been on with you. Uh, Highway 99 went from the darkest place in California to the brightest place. It is where the gangs, uh, it is where the government it is where everything went wrong. Everyone that lives along Highway 99, which stretches from Red Bluff North, all the way down to 45 miles south of Bakersfield, has been assaulted. Families have been destroyed. Mexican drug cartels have moved gangs into the cities of Bakersfield, Stockton, Modesto, uh, and Fresno. The crime rate off the hook, the government took away the water from the farmers. Then in 2008, the predatory lending mortgages that were given to people so easily ended up turning vast parts of the Central Valley into a ghost town. Hmm. Well, the Bible says the people that walked in darkness, as you know, all of the Pharisees believed that Jesus would start his ministry somewhere around Jerusalem, and he went right. north to the people that had been banished, the people who had been forgotten. This is exactly, there was one time, uh, Sid, where there are five cities along Highway 99 that were rated in the top 10 worst places to live in the United States. And now the glory of God has arrived. The result of a dream I had where I was hovering over California and the entire highway turned into a river. And the Lord said, this is a corridor of my glory. And I know mm -hmm. God has been speaking to you about his glory a lot. So that's that's how that's the setup to what just happened in in Modesto. Well, the reason that I'm so excited is for the last oh, five, seven years, I knew that this glory was coming. And this is the year that it's beginning. And I yes. do say beginning because and we'll talk about this a little bit. But the beginning is better than most places have in America. But wait till half, it, it gets to the high water level. Yes, sir. I, I mean, where all we can do is, like as, as Ezekiel talks about, all you can do is swim in the river. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, what happened in Modesto is that 600 people volunteered to move into that city for uh, approximately six weeks. We had these volunteers. They went into every homeless camp among every gang member, door to door, gave away a, a convoy of semi trucks of food and clothing. And the end result was thousands were saved and not just saved. They were saved in an atmosphere of conviction and glory and miracles so that they were truly discipled. They, they didn't just come forward. They were sobbing. Some of them. It, it wasn't like Billy Graham said in his biography uh, that uh, he had one regret. He made converts and not disciples because you, this is where the glory comes in. Yes, sir. And I hope the people really catch this. To know if there's authentic glory, the earmark of it is deep, heartfelt repentance. 
And you know, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I'll tell you one story very quickly. And I've got to reserve the name and a lot of the details. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that a gang decided that a young man needed to be killed and they put a green light on him. And uh, he and his grandmother and his family and his wife and his parents were living in a home and terrified. And then he came to the tent and could not come forward. He said, if I come forward, uh, I'll be identified and killed. Instead, our workers went out and got him so dramatically saved. Now, the entire group of them are in a safe house far away from the area of danger. But his refusal to leave, that he stood there paralyzed by the power of God, wanting Jesus, that's what you said, discipleship. These people know what they're being saved from. And, mm -hmm. and we put out 1,800 chairs, and it was not enough. We were overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the numbers. So it was fire and glory. Well, you're working now with an amazing church. Uh, it, it's called Destiny Church in Sacramento, California. Why do I say it's amazing? Right. It's because they had the courage and conviction not to shut down when the government said everything can be shut down except protests. Uh, everything has to be shut down except protests. I mean, something there's some unequal weights in that type of thing. But they didn't shut down, and God's really blessing them. Yes, he is. It's Greg and Kathy Farrington of Destiny Church in Rockland, California. And the reason we knit hearts is because they are on fire for God. And they withstood the fury of Sacramento politics they had protesters. They had people try to shut down their church. And now they are overflowing. And even on a Wednesday night, they called me with all the programs they were running. They had 3,000 people in midweek meetings in California. And, and now we are uniting together. And May 2nd through the 5th, we are on the William Jessup University Soccer Complex. We're setting up 4,000 seats outside and we're expecting an outpouring of the Spirit. So the fire that was in Modesto is now moving north to Rockland, California, and it's going to be astounding. It's going to be the biggest thing you've ever done. And the reason I know that is the minute you came out of your mouth, the glory of God just descended. Glory uh, to God. That, that's what I go on. Not so much the words, but the yes, presence sir. of God. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you've been having some really wonderful uh, salvations, repentance. Uh, and if that, that would have been enough, as we Jewish people say at Passover, it would have been enough if he just, God just did this. But he did this and this and this. Um, uh, I, I'd like our people to see some video footage of some of the miracles going on. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, per, let, let's just let the video speak for itself. I mean, that's the best documentation. Let's take a look at someone who had a broken back. What happened?
in the name of Jesus. I declare the power of God to flow all over this tent. Well, Mario, it's obvious to us that God's glory is moving at your meetings. You know, the young woman that you just saw was so overcome uh, by God because she had just gotten right with Jesus. And then all of a sudden, this excruciating pain that because the bone was broken, uh, it instantly left and she was overcome. That was the atmosphere under that tent. Well, um, I, I'm going to tell everyone, I'll give you, uh, I, I think we have to give a little warning when we do something like this. You better have your dancing shoes on when you look at this next person that had, past tense, MS. Let's take a look. This is very, very special. I don't know why, but I'm going to have you talk for a second. You know this young lady? It's your mommy. Yes. And you're happy because your mommy has been healed. Yeah. What was wrong with her? <laughs> she had multiple sclerosis. And the, she came here in a walker. And she's dancing now. Mario, the, you, you've been involved in preaching, in evangelism, most of your walk in the Lord. What is different about this time? I what think, are you seeing? You know, Sid, what's different is the intensity of the glory. It's thicker than anything I've seen. I was in the Jesus movement but I never saw anything like this in the Jesus movement. Now think about what I just said. The Jesus movement ended up winning maybe 20 million Americans to Christ. And yet what I am watching unfold in California has a depth and intensity. And I think it has a lot to do with the darkness. Uh, wokeness, left-wing uh, philosophies, perversion, everything that our children are being forced to believe that is racist, that is perverted, that is so wicked, even to the highest levels of our authority. I think God is saying, you know what, I'm not going to let America die. And I believe that while that's a blessing, it's also a very fearful thing because I know God is willing to go to some extremes to keep this nation from going under. And a lot of it has to do with exposing sin, uh, exposing false doctrine, exposing people that are counterfeits and, and uh, false Christians, and that they, it's, it's a time, you know, people don't realize that Acts chapter 5 showed us a street where thousands were being healed even by the shadow of Peter, but in the same chapter, Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead in church, because that's what the glory does, and that's what I believe is why the fear of the Lord is the safest emotion of this hour, is the fear and reverence of Almighty God. Well, we're living in such unusual times, and I'm reminded of one of my favorite passages. It's in Isaiah chapter 60, and it says there is deep darkness in the world going on. But he, he says, arise, shine. Your light has come, and the glory of the, of the Lord is covering the whole earth. I believe that's what we're coming into. Yeah. Uh, you know, if anyone doubts it, I dare them to walk into the tent. Because even within a mile of that tent, there is a radiating sense of the presence of God. It is not Mario Murillo. It's not me. It's the hour we're in. And I'm not the only one reporting this, Sid. There are leaders across America reminding me of right after Azusa Street broke out and people were coming to LA and taking the fire back to their cities. 
It's that moment right now where we're getting reports of the glory of God breaking out in various parts of America. Well, what is going on now? I, I don't think anyone can understand where I'm coming from. I have tasted this. I have seen it. I got saved as a Jewish man because the glory of God came on me. I started with the glory. Uh, my father came to the Lord in an impossible situation as a Jewish man that the worst thing in the world he could think of is his son believed in Jesus. And even worse, I was public. There's no way my dad, born in Poland, could have come to the Lord. But the glory of God descended on him in the hospital room and I couldn't even believe my ears. He said a prayer to know the Messiah. That's what the glory is going to do. But here's the difference. The glory in the past has been on a few chosen individuals. We spoke of one, Catherine Coleman, uh, that I had the privilege of knowing and actually being on her television show. Uh, but it just it, it's just on a few people and not all the time. This is what is different. It'll be a movement of God, not personalities. That's what, Mario, you were talking about. Yes, It'll sir. be all, all the person has to do, the catalyst, is get up there, hold their hands up to a holy God, and begin worshiping him and throughout the whole auditorium. And this is what I see. I see everyone getting healed. I don't see the controversy that's been going on about prophecy. Are you a prophet if you miss one or you don't? I don't even want to get into that. There will be no such thing of a prophetic word falling to the ground when that glory hits. Uh, there'll be no such thing, no excuse for depression. There'll be, you know, the world is getting darker. But the glory of God is ready to descend. Uh, tell me, um, this sacramental campaign, why is it important that it's happening there? You know, it is the seat of power for California. It is where all of these policies that have destroyed us. Uh, Gavin Newsom, the governor, has been... Uh, now, officially, he's going to be recalled. They're going to have an election to recall him. And that is a telling moment because several hundred thousand of the people that signed the petition to have him recalled are Democrats. He has kept their children out of hmm. school. He locked down the churches. He destroyed businesses. Uh, there was one night where he went out to a restaurant with his family and friends while he was telling everyone else, to stay locked in their houses. When he wouldn't let the classrooms open up, he put his own children in, in classrooms in a private school and kept the classrooms open. So he's in trouble. God is toppling woke. We just saw that the Academy Awards had the most miserable ratings ever. Only less than 10 million people watched it, in, which is staggering because it was at 41 million just a few years ago. And then we have LeBron James who made a very ill-advised remark. So wokeness is falling apart and God is moving in Sacramento and we're gonna be on a university campus which is telling in itself. And the fact is we're not supposed to be allowed to do this, yet we are. We're not supposed to oppose this power, yet we are. And we know that the glory of God is going to be outpoured on that William Jessup campus. We know it is, but that's not all. We're gonna come back to Sacramento after that. We're gonna be with Sammy Rodriguez in August and do a tent crusade in the heart of Sacramento. And then we're looking to use the single most important site. We're looking to use a site that I can't name. We're gonna confirm it, but it is an amazing moment for Sacramento and the power of God's gonna fall. And I believe that it's going to be a catalyst to statewide revival. I give God all the glory. I have nothing to do with it uh, other than to obey God and, and say what I'm saying. I think one thing that you said, Sid, that is so critical is that you were born in the glory. 
there was something that Catherine said about death to self, and that became an unpopular doctrine. And it's not a coincidence that just as we lost the idea of emptying self so the spirit would move, was replaced with a model of audacity that claiming and believing that you were somebody important would release the power of God. And she understood that it was brokenness and giving God all the glory. I've been through uh, a lot of suffering in my life, but now I realize that what it's forged in me is that I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I don't want man's approval. All I want is the Holy Spirit to flow. And I see that in you. And I believe that we're, we're both at that same episode in our life where the only thing that matters is watching God move in the earth and win souls. And, and you know, you said something else before we went on the air. Uh, I'm reminded of the book of Acts, just before Pentecost, with the or Shavuot, where the Spirit of God descended on them. It says they were as one. And you, this was the statement. I wrote it down. Nothing unifies the church like soul winning. Nothing gives life to the church like soul winning. Yes. You know, without babies, you just get old and die. Yep. Yep. You know, and it's amazing. Billy Graham said that he wished he had made converts. But one thing he did do is whenever a Billy Graham crusade came to town, all the churches forgot their doctrines and they all realized yeah. we need to win the lost. And, and it brought a unity. The Jesus movement did the same thing. And in Modesto, we saw hundreds of churches come together because souls were going to get saved and nothing unifies. And even in the Bible, the wonderful analogy, when the, the great catch of fish happened and Peter called for the other boats to come alongside and help gather the fish. Uh, that's the way God works. When the souls start getting saved, all the boats come together and it, it becomes irrelevant about argument and disagreement. What happens is everyone rejoices. You see a heroin addict get saved. You see an empty wheelchair. You see a blind eye open. You see cancer victims healed as we have. And you realize that souls are being saved. You know, it says in Acts chapter 14, verse three in the Living Bible, it says, God proved that their message was from him by giving them power to work great miracles. And the people get excited, they rejoice. Pastors weep together. And it, it becomes an amazing, overwhelming experience to watch this. Well, I'll tell you something else that I see. It hadn't happened yet. I don't know that it's ever happened to what degree I see it happening. But I see a, a earmark of this greater glory will be resurrections of the dead in unprecedented numbers. Why? When the Messiah rose from the dead, they had the saints came out of their graves and walked around Jerusalem. So it is biblical. What was it? The glory of God came when he rose from the dead. It was the glory of God that gave the resurrections. I'm going to capture on television, and I pray you'll be part of this, Mario, people that are amputated. The whole arm has been amputated, soldiers. And, what, and I want to catch on camera. I wanted that whole arm growing out. The secular news will get bored with politics. I don't know. I'm getting bored with politics. <laughs> uh, the secular news is going to be bored with politics. Hey, they, what are they going to do? They're going to be showing these creative miracles that no man can dispute because it'll be recorded on film and we'll have doctor's reports. And it, when we go on the, the secular news, the, 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 the newscaster will want to get saved so badly. That's what I see happening, Mariel. You know, I feel sad that I don't have a quote for you from A.C. Valdez, who was 11 years old in Azusa Street. And he grew up in Azusa Street. He was there for the entire event, became an evangelist. And then he wrote a prophecy. And I, I got to find it for you. But he said, there are no words in the dictionary that will explain or can do justice to the soon coming worldwide outpouring of the glory of God. And then he said the dead would be raised. He hmm. said limbs would be restored huh. 
and that God would move in a manner that the earth had never seen. And it's, it parallels, you, you verbatim said the same thing. But A.C. Valdez said that, and uh, I'll have to get it for you. But it's an amazing similarity to what you just said. Uh, Mario, I know you function in amazing, because I've seen video fo- footage of this, in amazing words of knowledge, really amazing. I want to um, uh, pray for those that are church-going Christians, that love God, to have their own experience with God. And I'm, uh, And then... Uh, and, and then I may pray for people to be healed just a, a yes. little bit. And I'd like you to jump in and whatever God shows you, okay? Yes, sir. And I realize too, Sid, that you have that same amazing gift. In meetings, you've seen dramatic healings and so many people saved. So it's an honor to partner with you for what we're about to do because I believe that God is going to use this moment. All of you that are watching, please listen carefully. This is a moment when cancer could vanish in your body. This is the moment when a lifetime of addiction to either opioids, alcohol, heroin, crack cocaine, crystal meth can be broken by the power of Jesus. The Lord has orchestrated this specific message to come to you, whether it came live or later as a re-recording. And that's why everyone needs to share this broadcast, because it's literally like sharing the anointing when you do that. But I, I just believe it. So I'd like to just say a quick prayer. And then, of course, Please. team up with you, man of God. Father, there's something in my heart for all the millions who are going to watch this video. And Lord, you showed me that this one is going to go out further than we understand. This is going to go into places where the word of God cannot go in the natural. And Lord, it could be someone about to commit suicide in a hotel. It could very well be a minister on the verge of quitting and running off with some secretary and destroying thousands of people. But Lord, you are here for the single mother, the addict, the broken, the lost, the disenfranchised, those that the left claim to love so deeply, minorities that are trapped in bullet-ridden, infested cities. Let the power of God flow as we have never seen it before on any broadcast. Let wheelchairs be emptied. Let everyone place their hand on or near where they are sick and let fire fall on them, and instantaneous healings in numbers that we cannot fathom. Lord, who knew that the fulfillment that where the Bible says, and the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth and all flesh shall see it together, would be fulfilled through technology. But it could, in this moment, a great massive revival. Lord, let every lukewarm Christian be convicted to the heart, torn, cut to the heart of their need to repent and serve Christ without hypocrisy. Lord, let there come reports from this moment that we teamed up that are absolutely beyond words. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want you to repeat this prayer out loud to the best of your ability. And Holy Spirit, I pray that every word that is spoken by myself or Mario or those that are repeating this prayer right now, that your presence will be on every word. And the glory we've been talking about that is already starting throughout the world, really, right now, I pray that that glory will come on everyone praying this prayer. Repeat this out loud and mean it to the best of your ability. Amen. Dear God. Dear God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry. I believe. I believe. Jesus paid the price for my sins. Jesus paid the price for my sin. And by his shed blood. And by his shed blood. I'm not only forgiven. I'm not only forgiven. But God remembers my sins no more. But God remembers my sin no more. 
It's so good to be free. It's so good to be free. It's so good to start life right now fresh. It's so good to start life fresh right now. And now that I am clean. And now that I am clean. I ask Jesus to come and live inside of me. I ask Jesus to come and live inside of me. You paid the ransom for you my paid, injustice. You paid the ransom for my injustice. The just for the unjust. The just for the unjust. I'm so grateful, God. I'm so grateful, God. I proclaim with my mouth. I proclaim with my mouth. You are my savior. You are my savior. And you are my Lord. And you are my Lord. Now do what King David did. Lift your holy hands Amen. to God. Amen. That's what King David said. I said, I lift holy hands to God. It's the universal form of making him Lord, of surrender. And repeat this prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fill me with your glory. Fill me with your glory. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your presence. Show me my purpose. Show me my purpose. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Amen. Amen.